Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you the last podcast episode for 2023. So I thought I would split up the last review that I did with this one, just so I could put all of this content for the end of the end of the year, do one big final push for what I've been watching and reviews and gameplay and all of that stuff. So with that being said, I am gonna jump right into it. Um just as a heads up, I'm not doing a video this week just because I've been having um, issues with uh, video and voice recording and syncing issues and stuff like that. So just to avoid that for this time, I'm just going to do audio only. So in case you're wondering about that, I'll probably still try to get a YouTube version up if you guys want to listen there still, but um, it'll be audio only if I um, do get that up there. Um, with that being said, um, last week we had the Video Game Awards and I kept hearing about this album called Old Gods of Asgard, which, or by Old Gods of Asgard, which I would have never normally not really thought about and it kept popping up from time to time and as it turns out, it is a band that is part of the Alan, I want to say Alan Wake video game universe, but they're backed by the real life band Poets of the Fall, of which I am a fan of. And if you're not sure who they are, they are, for me personally, best known for creating the title track to um, Max Payne 2 uh, Late Goodbye. So um, I thought I'd listen to the album, and overall, it is one of those things where if you know of the band, then this music is. A particular note and interest because it is equally good. Um, the t- the main track from their album Rebirth for Alan Wake, Heralds of Darkness, is um, of particular note just because it is a super long track. It's like on the the video version I th- want to say is. Um, the official music video is about nine and a half minutes long, but their actual total track on the album is just over 13 minutes. So think along the lines of, you know, all the parts to like another, um, another brick in the wall and, um, Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight. So, uh, very good track. Um, you can easily see them eventually splitting that track up into like four or five, four parts or something like that. So, um, definitely a good album to listen to. And if for nothing else, definitely listen to that song. And check out the live music video, it was very well done, so um, a good track there. As far as just random movie stuff goes, I did end up rounding out the watch through for the Die Hard films. So I did end up watching, um, I think I mentioned it on the last full review, but I think I did end up watching um, Die Hard with a Vengeance. But for this time around, I did also watch Live Free or Die Hard and A Good Day to Die Hard. So. We don't get um, McLean's wife in these two films, but we do get to see him reconcile with his wife or with his uh, daughter and son. They get their own movies to fully hash out their characters. So um, for nothing else, it's good uh, good films for that. I still enjoyed them, um, and they're overall good ways to round out the films. It would have been nice for McLean to reconcile with his wife, but um, this is, I guess, a good substitute for that. Um, and this, just as background noise, I did also end up re-watching the Lethal Weapon films. Um, for me, those still stand out as good films. I do like them even in the fourth film when, um, well, what's his name? Mel Gibson's character realizes that he's old, so uh, bring that um, story arc full circle. So, um, those they still hold up. I mean, they're good movies. So between them, between Lethal Weapon and Die Hard, good rewatches for uh, this time of year. Um, if you're fans of um, Monk, the TV show detective who was basically I'm gonna say germaphobe, but you know, kind of living the COVID lifestyle before COVID, um, they came out with his movie 
a couple of weeks ago on Peacock. Um, it's called Mr. Monk's Last Case. If you're a fan of the TV show, then you kind of get a full-length movie version of the show here. So instead of the 45 minutes, it's about an um, hour and a half. It's reconciling um, his stepdaughter um, losing her husband, solving the case, having to come out of retirement to find out about that. So they bring the whole cast back. They have a lot of good references to the original show about his um fear uh, like all his fears um the randy disher project um, ca um the captain being wrong about the guy he's working for and all of that so if you basically want an hour and a half version of the tv show then you have um mr monk's last case which even though they call it his last case they kind of do leave it open to bring more films or potentially another season of the tv show so i wouldn't mind either one of them the movie whole um pretty much gives you a good recap of what happens in the show kind of like what the psych movie did for the tv show so you get a good summary in the films but if you want more of the references and backstories and connections then you have to watch the show um, this week as well, um, on Netflix, the Super Mario Brothers animated movie is, um, was available for streaming. Didn't get to watch it in the theaters, but watching it now, it was very well done. I wasn't sure what to expect from it, but in watching it now, um, I actually enjoyed all of it. I mean, you get to see the meat, you get to learn about Mario and Luigi as um, handymen uh, plumbers in Brooklyn. They go into this magical uh, pipe where they go to the Mushroom Kingdom. They learn about uh, Bowser and his army. Um, and then you get to meet, you know, all the various characters. So the turtles and the and Shy Guy and Princess Peach and Toad and all of them. We get to see the creation of their unique um, go-karts. Um, the um, abilities that they get when they eat mushrooms and all of that. So... For me, all of they ha they basically pulled all the um, stops from all the video games from all the eras. So you get um, all the music from you know the original one from the original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, um, and various other properties, um, all in a Super Mario World or Mario sixty four kind of environment. Um, and then you know the mute. So the music is all there. Um, you even get a um, level or a part of the film where when Mario was learning how to um, learn his powers, uh, essentially a level builder um, by Princess Peach, where she builds a custom level. So you get things like that. Um, the funniest line was by Luigi, I thought, where he says, "You get, you just got Luigi'd." So things like that. It all holds up. It's good for everybody. If you're a fan of the original video games, you have kids, whatever. But um, give it a watch. It goes by fast before you know it. So. Um, that's really, I mean, if you, so basically if you know the video games, then you kind of know what to expect. Um, and I don't know, I mean, that's all I got to say. The animation was good, so a very good film at that. Um, so that is the bulk of the, or that's all the TV show and video game reviews, so, or uh, TV show and movie reviews. So as far as video game reviews go, I did finally have a chance to finish Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil. Um, it was a good completion to an add-on pack to Doom 3, so um, overall well, well done. It was good to finally round out the Betruger story arc, but going back to what I said before about the game, they could have done with fewer um, levels in the same complexes, so instead of, you know, four or five levels in Alpha Labs, Delta Labs, and then in the add-on pack for Arab with uh, Erebus, um, they could have um, reduced that to maybe two or three um, sections in each of those levels and then um, had the expansion pack all as part of the main game. So um, don't make the ending of Doom, or don't make the Cyber Demon the main boss in Doom 3. Do it like the first game where he's like, you know, one or two levels prior to the end and then make Betruger the final boss. Or even bring out the Cyber Demon as a second to last uh, on the second to last level, and Betruger's the final level. So something along those lines, and then you know push up some of the bad guys at the end of the main game. So one of those things where um, it, part of it felt like they did all those levels to kind of give them more time and ultimately have an expansion pack, but 
It also felt like they could have had Resurrection of Evil as part of the main game and just had one complete game. So not necessarily a negative, but it's one of those things where um, it didn't need to, need to be an expansion. It could have been all one game and uh, make it one complete Doom 3 game and it would have been um, perfect just like that. Um, and then to follow up with that as part of the 30th year anniversary of the Doom franchise from the launching of the original Doom game, um, John Romero, one of the creators and designers of the original Doom game, put a put out a sequel mod called Sigil 2. Um, so it's a, like I said, it's a direct sequel to Sigil 1 where um, after de defeating the demons in Sigil 1, the Doom guy is trying to go back home, but the but help opens another portal to keep him there, and we get essentially what we see in Sigil Two. It's a nine, eight or nine level map or um, mega wad, so you get a bunch of new levels. Overall, it was very well designed, good colors, good presentation, uh, very intriguing, and um, not necessarily like thought provoking, but it was very well um, for me. It was visually very well done. I could have done with fewer ledges. But um, overall, as far as you know, going through it and solving it, and, um, f uh, beating the enemies, I thought it was um, very interesting. And um, I mean, in a matter of like a week and a half, it was done. Granted, it was only nine levels, but um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was um, um, very well done. So it's one of those things where I do want to ultimately keep going back to finding more um and more do mods to play so not much to say there like i said it's a sequel you, if you've played doom one two or any of the mods based on it then you kind of know um what to expect for this mod so definitely give it a shot um and then with that being said um i have started my playthrough for duke nukem 3d so i did want to get start getting through that to see how the game is um get as far as what my memory of it is which as of this recording i did finish the first episode um la meltdown and i think i've gotten as far as the fifth level in that episode um the abyss because I do remember at some point that um, I got to this big cavern valley area that's kind of like with a lot of caverns and um, stuff like that. Um, which I remember that I, like I was using the rocket launcher years ago and I couldn't figure out how to complete it. And I guess um, it might be the San Andreas Fault or whatever where I just didn't know what to do. And I mean even in the playthrough this time... Um, I did have trouble going through the map. Apparently you have to touch these hands and you have to make sure you go into certain rooms and make sure that um, like some of the cavern or some of the um, valley faults go off or whatever in order to proceed. So I think that's possibly why I was not able to get through it because I do remember like the first half of it and that's about it. So um, this time around I was able to finish it. So. Um, I'm able to now get into the remaining episodes to play them. So I beat the first boss, the Battle Overlord or something like that, or the Battle Lord. So now it's the sec now it's on to Lunar Melt, Lunar Meltdown or Lunar Apocalypse or whatever that second episode is called. But overall, it's still a fun game. I mean, it is um, a game of its time, so it can't really support a lot of what's happening in the game, but. Um, I do kind of still want to get through it and play it because I, I do remember starting it years ago and never finishing much like Doom so um, there is a playlist in the show notes so you can check out um, or follow along with the playthrough as I finish levels or um, gameplays which I started off as a level by level thing but if I do but I'm not really keeping to that if I play a couple levels or more at a time then I'll do that as well but um definitely check it out follow along on the youtube channel so that is all for this particular review and episode so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that you can um find me on the various social media sites which are linked on the website along with past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff at headphonesneal.reviews um, if you want to get early access to the podcast, commercial-free versions of the episodes, and stuff like that, definitely support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash patelnzero1. 
gentlemen, that's all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.